Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. New York Transit appears to be on the cusp of a transformation. To start with, there's the $51.5 billion capital plan recently announced by the MTA. The plan set to kick off next year is the largest capital plan in the MTA's history and promises to invest billions in the city's subways, buses, and commuter rail lines over the next five years. And then there are the dramatic changes to commuting in New York that are already underway, such as the rapid expansion of bicycle lanes across the five boroughs, an expansion that's been put into the spotlight due to the alarming rise in cycling deaths this year. There's also been a renewed focus on the city's bus network, a component that, according to transit advocates, has long been underserved. The recent success of the 14th Street Busway program, which bans cars from most of the busy crosstown corridor, has officials calling for more of the same. So when it comes to making getting around the city easier, smoother, and faster, there is no shortage of ambition. But as always with New York City Transit, the devil is in the details. So joining us now to decipher it all is Vin Barone, transit reporter at AM New York. Vin, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, so let's let's start with the biggest topic, and that is, of course, that big, big, big number, $51.5 billion. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, for those who don't know, that is the spending blueprint for the MTA over the next five years. Every five years, they put out a spending plan for all their major new projects. So this one really focuses on the city. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of that money is going into the subway system, going into buses, um, in terms of new signals. So we'll be replacing uh, a majority of the old signals on the system. Everyone know, is familiar with the term signal failure, right? Of course. So we'd be, mon uh, we'd, we'd be modernizing those signals with a computer, uh, a computer equivalent. And we'd also be spending billions on making subways more accessible. But there are two big problems, mm -hmm. uh, uh, two big questions, I should say. One is, will the MTA get the funding to, to support the plan? Mm -hmm. And two is, can they actually get their work done in a reasonable time in five years? Oh, of course. And just one more time for uh, the people who might have forgotten, who's going to approve that funding? Well, it's going to come <laughs> from a variety of sources, right? So the governor is effectively in control of the MTA, right? Okay. So he's going to he's going to provide he's pledged to provide three billion towards it. He's asking the city to provide another three billion. Mm -hmm. The mayor is still debating that, and then of course there's the federal government that needs to provide a big chunk of that money, and we are not sure where this administration stands on transit. They've not been friendly to transit. So that's still a big question mark right now. All right. Uh, well, let's say moving on from the uh, budget that they put forward to the man who's in charge of the MTA, Andy Byford. Now, of course, we heard that he was going to be leaving, but then he said he was going to be coming back and actually staying. And what's going on with him and the direction he's trying to lead this organization? Right. So this seems to be reflective of a larger issue at the MTA, which is you know, people like Byford who are trying to make a difference and, and move the MTA in a positive, or in, a, in a forward manner. But uh, they keep getting held up in this bureaucracy that is the MTA, outside pressure from mm -hmm. the governor's office. The transit president, MT, uh, Andy Byford, he, who runs the subways and buses, submitted a, a letter of resignation. He withdrew it. He told reporters and the public that he had concerns that were addressed. We never got any details on what those concerns were. But it is a big problem with the MTA where they have ambitious people coming in, younger people, people like Byford at the executive level, who just feel stymied and stuck. Yes, and of course, we've seen um, almost a turnstile, if you will, of <laughs> people over the last few years, um, I guess perhaps getting exhausted by the same issue. Uh, but so to continue more with transit, um, of course, the buses, that's a really big issue. A lot of people have said the buses have been underfunded, that the, you know they're problematic, they're too slow, et cetera. And so now we have these busways. Um, first of all, the 14th Street busway, was that really as successful as some advocates have said it was? So the 14th Street busway is relatively new, and it just launched in the beginning of October. And so far, it does actually look uh, to be a big success. Uh, right now, bus speeds have increased by about 30%. Ridership has actually bumped up, so it seems like riders are noticing it. I was on the bus the other day, and a woman said unsolicited to me that it was amazing, and I've never heard 
someone use that kind of that word, <laughs> that word to describe <laughs> bus. bus. <laughs> right. So um, it seems to be working. The big question now is whether or not the city can maintain the effectiveness of it once they start pulling away police officers. So we'll find out in a few months' time on that front. And then you have advocates and some elected officials saying, well, we need to do this in other places. Of course. Yeah. And we've heard that for some actually really busy crosstown uh, thoroughfares, correct? Yes. I mean, right now it seems like the most natural places to go from 14th Street is 34th Street or 42nd Street. Those are two streets that were floated by the speaker, Corey Johnson. Uh, and and, you know, the bus system, it moves 2 million people a day in the city, so it's nothing to laugh at. And it's something that really needs investment, especially as the city tries to move to become more sustainable, mm -hmm. get people out of cars. You need to have reliable bus and subway service. And, of course, speaking of getting people out of cars, um, the expansion of the bike lanes. Now, we also have seen an increase in cycling deaths in the city. So. Uh, how is that affecting the urgency or the need for more bike lanes? Right, so bike lanes were a big component of the city's Vision Zero initiative that's now in its sixth year, because um, they not only make the streets safer for cyclists, but they make them safer for drivers and pedestrians as well. So what we've seen this year is an unfortunate uptick in cycling deaths. The city seems to be blaming that on, on a, a growing uh, a growing cycling rate in more industrial parts of Brooklyn, where a lot of the fatalities have occurred, mm -hmm. and then also an increase in big vehicles and trucks making deliveries. So they have, in reaction to this increase in cycling deaths this year, they've pledged to install more protected bike lanes separated by cars or by ballers, plastic ballers, um, up from 20 miles each year to 30 miles. And you know we're really waiting to see how that works, if they get to that 30 mile mark. But there's still a lot of concerns to think bigger than that and, and, and think about building out cycleways like the West Side Greenway mm -hmm. or the East River Paths where cyclists are much farther separated from traffic. They're not interacting with traffic really at all. Um, we're running out of time, but very quickly, couldn't let you go without talking about fare beaters. Yes. That was something the MTA really wanted to focus on. Yes. How big of a problem is that? Well, the MTA, they're, their collection of fare evasion data is still a little flawed, um, but it seems to be costing them around 200 million, 225 million a year, and it seems to be going up this year, at least according to their estimates. So, but they're trying to cut down on it, um, and part of that uh, process is hiring a huge number of new police officers, 500 new police officers, putting them in the subway system, putting them in the bus system to police that to police other so-called quality of life problems like homelessness. And that's been a big, uh, that's been a controversial point uh, at the MTA. I mean, a lot of advocates feel that adding cops is not the answer to these problems. And the MTA is trying to wade through this and figure out what's the right approach because, you know, they're going through a financial crisis at the authority right now. And adding cops costs money too, just as fair evasion costs the MTA money. So of it's course. a delicate balance. Well, um, we always appreciate your reporting and helping us understand this delicate balance that we see coming from the MTA and hopefully um, letting us know that our ability to get around the city will be a little bit smoother. As always, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.